Blue Origin has just announced that its Mark I lunar lander is ready to take over SpaceX as the primary human transportation system for NASA's Artemis program. This is a major development in the space race, and it has the potential to revolutionize how we explore the moon. What does this mean for the future of space exploration? How will the Mark I lunar lander compare? And what are the implications of this announcement for the Artemis program? Watch this video to learn more about Blue Origin's Mark I lunar lander and its potential to revolutionize space exploration. Earlier this year, Blue Origin unveiled the full-scale physical demonstrator of its lunar lander, known as the Mark I. This announcement also came with a wealth of new information about the initial lander, its evolution into the Mark II, and its role in NASA's Artemis program. The Mark I is a single-launch cargo lander that can deliver up to 3 metric tons to the lunar surface. It is powered by a single BE-7 engine and has a range of up to 2,500 kilometers. The lander is equipped with a variety of sensors and avionic systems that will allow it to land safely and precisely anywhere on the Moon. The Mark I is designed to test and refine technologies for the Mark II which is a human lander that will carry astronauts to the moon starting in 2029. The Mark II will be able to carry up to four astronauts and will have a range of up to 6,500 kilometers. It will also be equipped with a variety of advanced life support systems that will allow astronauts to live and work on the lunar surface for up to 30 days. Blue Origin's lunar lander is one of two options that NASA is considering for its Artemis program. The other option is SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. NASA is carefully evaluating both options to ensure the success of its moon missions. In parallel to the development of the Mark I and Mark II landers, there have been concerns about SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander and its timeline for readiness. In particular, there have been concerns about the complexity of the Starship design and its ability to meet NASA's safety requirements. NASA is currently in the process of evaluating the proposals from Blue Origin and SpaceX. A decision on which lander will be used for the Artemis program is expected in early 2024. Blue Origin's Blue Moon Mark I lunar lander is a significant step forward for the company's lunar exploration program. The lander is designed to deliver cargo to the Moon's surface and test technology for future crewed missions. The Mark I is a three-stage lander that is powered by Blue Origin's BE-7 engine. The engine burns liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, which can be produced on the Moon from lunar ice. This will make it possible to refuel the lander on the Moon and extend its mission capabilities. The Mark I is also equipped with a number of advanced technologies including a terrain-relative navigation system that uses LiDAR to identify hazards and guide the lander to a safe landing site a high-precision landing system that can land the lander within 100 meters of its target site, a robotic arm that can be used to load and unload cargo. The Mark I is scheduled to make its first flight in 2024. The first mission will be a technology demonstration mission to test the lander's systems and capabilities. Future Mark I missions will deliver cargo to the moon and support a variety of scientific and commercial activities. The Mark I is a precursor to Blue Origin's Mark II crewed lunar lander. The Mark II is currently under development and is scheduled to make its first flight in 2029. The Mark II will be used to transport astronauts to the Moon as part of NASA's Artemis program. The development of the Blue Moon Mark I is a significant milestone for Blue Origin and for lunar exploration. The lander will play a vital role in testing the technologies needed for future crewed missions to the Moon. It will also help to establish a sustainable lunar economy. Blue Moon Mark I is designed to remain on the lunar surface and provide safe, reliable, and affordable access to the Moon's environment. The Mark I can transport up to 3 metric tons of cargo to any location on the lunar surface, making it ideal for a variety of logistics, infrastructure, and scientific payloads. The Mark I is powered by a single BE-7 engine which uses liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen propellants. The lander has a descent stage and an ascent stage. The descent stage houses the BE-7 engine, as well as the fuel tanks, avionics, and landing gear. The ascent stage houses the payload and the propellants for the return to orbit. 
The Mark I is equipped with a variety of navigation and guidance systems, including a star tracker, inertial navigation system, and laser altimeter. These systems allow the lander to accurately navigate to its landing site and land softly on the lunar surface. The Mark I is also equipped with a variety of communication systems, including UHF, VHF, and S-band radios. These systems allow the lander to communicate with ground control and with other spacecraft in orbit. The Mark I is designed to be reusable. The ascent stage can return to orbit and be refueled for future missions. This makes the Mark I a cost-effective solution for lunar cargo delivery. The lander is expected to play a significant role in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon by 2025. Blue Origin's Pathfinder mission is a test of their lunar lander, the Mark I SN001. The mission will test the lander's most important systems, including its engine, fuel systems, guidance systems, and communications system. It will also test the lander's ability to land precisely on the moon. The Pathfinder mission is important because it will help Blue Origin prepare for NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon. Blue Origin is one of the two companies that NASA has selected to develop a human landing system for the Artemis program. Blue Origin's lunar vision is to develop landers that can support a sustainable presence on the moon. This includes enabling scientific exploration, resource utilization, and infrastructure development. One of the key objectives of Blue Origin's lunar landers is to facilitate the utilization of lunar resources, particularly lunar ice. Lunar ice can be used to produce essential resources like liquid oxygen, LOX, and liquid hydrogen, LH2, which can power future missions. LOX and LH2 are the propellants used by Blue Origin's BE-7 engine, which powers the Blue Moon Lunar Lander. Blue Origin is also developing other technologies for in-city resource utilization, ISRU, such as mining and processing lunar regolith, soil. ISRU technologies could enable the production of a wide range of resources on the moon, including water, oxygen, hydrogen, and construction materials. Blue Origin's lunar landers are designed to be versatile and reusable. The Blue Moon Lander can carry multiple metric tons of payload to the lunar surface, including scientific instruments, rovers, and astronauts. The lander can also be used to deploy and service lunar infrastructure such as habitats, power plants, and communication systems. Blue Origin's lunar vision is ambitious but achievable. The company has a proven track record of innovation and success, and it is well positioned to lead the way in lunar exploration and development. The agency awarded contracts to SpaceX and Blue Origin to develop their respective lunar lander designs in April 2021. However, there have been concerns about the readiness of both landers, particularly SpaceX's Starship. Starship is a still under development reusable launch and spacecraft system that is designed to transport both people and cargo to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Blue Origin's lunar lander, on the other hand, is a more traditional design that is based on the company's new Glenn rocket. In a recent interview, Dr. Lisa Watson Morgan, the manager of the HLS program, acknowledged the challenges facing the program, but expressed optimism about the progress that has been made so far. She emphasized the importance of collaboration between NASA and industry partners in developing and deploying these complex systems. One of the key challenges facing the HLS program is the tight timeline. NASA aims to land astronauts on the moon by 2025, which leaves little time to develop, test, and certify the landers. Additionally, both SpaceX and Blue Origin are still working to mature their respective technologies. Another challenge is the cost of developing and deploying the landers. NASA has budgeted $2.9 billion for the HLS program, but this may not be enough to cover all of the costs associated with the program. Despite the challenges, Dr. Watson Morgan is confident that the HLS program will be successful. She points to the progress that has been made so far, including the successful completion of several key milestones by both SpaceX and Blue Origin. She also emphasizes the commitment of both NASA and industry partners to making the Artemis program a success. SpaceX's Starship HLS system is critical for the success of NASA's Artemis missions to the moon. However, there are concerns about SpaceX's ability to meet the program's timeline. Each Starship lunar mission requires multiple launches, including the lander itself and several tanker starships to refuel in Earth orbit 
before the journey to the moon. This complexity raises the risk of delays. Dr. Watson Morgan, a NASA official responsible for the Artemis program, recognizes the significance of SpaceX's approach in getting its lunar lander ready. But she also expresses concerns about the schedule. NASA is working closely with SpaceX to ensure the success of the next test flight and address any risks that may arise. NASA is currently funding both SpaceX and Blue Origin to develop lunar landers. This has raised some concerns about whether NASA is spreading itself too thin. However, NASA argues that it is important to have multiple options available in case one of the companies experiences delays or technical problems. Morgan's team is dedicating equal attention to both SpaceX and Blue Origin teams. She believes that both companies have unique strengths and weaknesses, and that NASA can benefit from learning from both of them. Morgan also emphasizes the importance of cryogenic fluid management for lunar exploration. She argues that both SpaceX and Blue Origin need to develop reliable and efficient ways to store and transfer cryogenic fluids. That's all for the incredible announcement of Blue Origin's Mark I moon lander. This could be a game changer for the race to the moon, and we are excited to see how it compares to SpaceX's Starship. What do you think of Blue Origin's Mark I moon lander? Do you think it has a chance to take over SpaceX's Starship? Let us know in the comments below.